Hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in to my update for HomeThing. It's a Wi-Fi remote that can control pretty much everything in your home. Now we got a new device with a much nicer screen. It's way faster. We have three buttons on the front, the four on the wheel, and then the center one, two on the top, one reset button on the right. On the top, there's an IR blaster, USB-C, and a Stemma QT port for plugging other stuff in. On the left side, we also got a mic, and then there's a lanyard hole on the bottom. On the screen, we have the title for the media player or whatever screen you're on, the time and the battery life. On the right side, there's a scroll bar that will adjust size based on how many items are on the list. If all the items in the list fit, then it disappears. Also, long titles will scroll in the menu so you can read them. Also on the now playing screen, they scroll. So we can make custom screens now. So I made a setting screen with dark mode and Wi-Fi and IP address. You can have sensors, text sensors, switches, lights. Okay, and for media player controls. So you can control any home assistant media player like Sonos, Spotify. We have the artist, song title, album, media position, duration, album position, and size. The top button will go to the menu. The right button is next song, bottom is play pause, left is previous song. And then this top right button here will toggle the option menu. So if you press shuffle on the right, it'll toggle shuffle and repeat on the bottom would toggle repeat. Up in the header, we can see icons for shuffle and repeat for when they're turned on. Scrolling adjusts the volume. And now here in Home Assistant, if we change the album, we can see the updates on Home Thing. And now vice versa, if we adjust the volume, we see it on Home Assistant. The mic on the side is used for voice commands through Home Assistant, so we can set up commands to change the color of the lights. So I have one like color scene for rainbow colors and then to change the color bright scene. To white, I have bright scene. We can also control the lights directly so we can turn the brightness up. We can change the colors and the temperature. These are all smart bulbs around my apartment. Using the port at the top, we can plug in a strip of LEDs, which I have over here. This is just a LED strip from Amazon that I wired into a Stemma QT plugin. And so I think it's off. When, right when you plug it in, but then we just have to turn it off and on. And now we're able to control the brightness, color, and set the effects. Using the IR blaster at the top, we can also control other light strips that come with a regular remote or a TV or anything like that. So to test this, I have a light strip over here that we can turn on and off. I only ended up recording the on and off commands for this light strip, but if you wanted to, you could record all the different colors and effect commands and program them into the remote. We can also control any TV setup in Home Assistant. So we can pick that out in the media player menu. And then we're able to turn it on using the option menu. And now the directional pad on the remote will work as a directional pad for the TV. Other buttons outside of the directional buttons are in the option menu. So you're able to go back and to the TV home using that. 
Voice Assistant also works for controlling the TV, so it can do stuff like open Plex. This calls a service in Home Assistant that knows to open Plex on the TV. Turn the TV off. Pretty cool. So on the device, we also have a few apps like Weather, which just reads the weather from Home Assistant. It has a nice icon. Also, there's a snake game. So if the device is just running on battery, the screen will fade out after I think 10 seconds, which you can change in the settings. Once it's faded out, it will go to sleep after four hours on battery, and then it lasts about two days on battery life. Thanks for checking out my little demo. That's pretty much it for what's on the screen. If you're curious about what's going on inside the remote, I have one that's taken apart right over here. So inside we have the screen and processor, uh, T-Display S3, scroll wheel from Adafruit, A microphone, GPIO expander, three buttons, a little capacitor for the GPIO expander, an IR blaster, and a transistor for the IR blaster. All right, thank you all for watching. Huge shout out to PCBWay for helping me 3D print cases and get the circuit board ordered. It was all very cheap and ended up shipping super fast. Also, they helped us set up an uh, online store so you're able to order the case and the circuit board directly from them. See you next time.